Hello, housemates, and welcome back to Planescape Torment. Last time we finally got out of the mortuary and we uh, explored a little bit around the outside, um, starting to try and figure out where we find this ferret character who may have the journal which we seek. Um, so we're going to continue that today, and there are also various side quests already starting to pile up, as you would expect in... Um, in an RPG. So here we are. Um, there are harlots we can talk to. Let's go talk to this green one. What's up, green lady? You see a tired looking woman dressed in a tight leather bodice and leggings. The odor of cheap perfume surrounds her like a cloud, and her face is covered with a mask of crude makeup. She smiles as she sees you. Why don't you stay and chat with me a bit, love? No time for that right now. Okay, let's see. Frightened Hive Dweller, Dustman. Why are you scared, bro? You see a man in tattered looking clothing. As you approach him, he suddenly stops and begins to look around, frightened. Greetings. The man looks startled and then takes a step back. Eh? What you be wanting, Cutter? His voice is shaky and he seems taken aback by your scars. I have nothing on me, so's I don't, and my rags are not worth the trouble. Calm yourself. I'm not here to rob you. I had some questions. He keeps a safe distance, and his eyes dart from side to side, as if expecting something to step out of the shadows. Questions, you said, and uh, what might the questions be? Let's see. Do you know someone named Farid? Name's not one I know, Cutter. Who's he? He's a collector, I think. He thinks, well, then most likely he has his kip in Rag Picker's Square then. You might want to look there. During the day, that is. Not a nice place at night. Where is Rag Picker's Square located? It's a few blocks from here. Go west from the mortuary as far as you can go, and you'll run right into it. Careful when you're around there, Cutter. The collectors there don't always be waiting for a body to die before they collect on them, eh? Got it. Thanks. Other questions? Uh, tell me about the city. Uh, where is Sigil? Sigil. Center of the plains to hear tell. Don't know from experience. He shrugs. I imagine every place touches here, one way or another. Not all of Sigil's as ugly as you see here, neither. <clears throat> tell me about the slums. Eh? He looks at you warily, and his brows furrow in confusion. What you be wanting to know about the hive, Cutter? What's of interest around here? Eh, it depends. Depends on what you find interesting, Cutter. I'm looking for work. He thinks. Precious little, eh, uh, honest work to be found around here, Cutter. You can hunt some brain vermin for some coppers, pass them off to the branch office of, of vermin for some jink to hear tell, but mess up with the brain vermin's dangerous work, though. You can also gather some debtors around the hive and take them to the mortuary for some jink. Brain vermin? Aye, nasty little critters. He bares his teeth like a rat. He looks pretty foolish. Alone, they're barely nothing at all. It's just when brain vermin get together, they get all smart the more of them around each other. They start getting as smart as a human. He shakes his head. Nobody in their right mind wants that to happen. Hazard to everyone's health it is. What other work? Where's this branch office? It's next to the hive market. Go spireward, that's south and west of the mortuary. Three or four blocks, and you'll dead end into it. The rat catchers mither out there in front. Can't miss it. Um, uh, it'll be done here. Eh, he licks his lips as you turn to leave. Cutter, you might think ye... He studies you for a moment. You could spare a few coppers for a blood to help you on your way. Not many around here do that for a fella. Enough for a man to wet his tongue after all that talking, eh? Mm. We have 145. We'll give him five coppers. He glances around to see if anyone saw the exchange, then tucks the jink in the folds of his robe. Thank you kindly, Cutter. May the lady shadow pass you by. All right, 
I guess that wasn't terribly helpful. Looks like the Dusty's lost one of the debtors. The post. This filthy looking corpse is in sad shape. Its shoulders are slumped, and one of its legs is broken, causing it to lean to one side. Stains cover it from head to toe. Judging from the smell and the texture, the stains run from the rotten fruit, run from rotten fruit to mud and bird droppings. To add to the indignity, graffiti has been carved onto its body, and several notices have been nailed to its chest, back, and head. I thought I was in bad shape. Don't all those nails hurt? The corpse makes no response. Examine the corpse. Despite the many stitches, the corpse's rotting skin is peeling in several places, revealing long stretches of muscle and bone. You'd guess that this zombie is frequently used as target practice. The fruit and mud stains aside, some of the tears in the skin still have rocks and bits of glass lodged in them. One wicked-looking cobblestone is still embedded in the side of his head. Pry out the cobblestone. I couldn't carry any more, so I had to drop it. You grab hold of the cobblestone and pull it out of the corpse's head. Traces of brain matter and rotting flesh slowly drip from it. It looks like whatever was in its head turned to ooze long ago. Examine the corpse. Examine the graffiti. A number of the leaflets have been ruined by rain, but some of them are still legible. One is tacked to his back, or one tacked to his back is from something called the Office of Vermin and Disease Control. The one on his forehead looks like a bill of fare for a restaurant. One on his chest looks like an official notice, and another appears to be some sort of want ad. Um, let's look at the vermin office one. To those hive citizens wishing gainful employ with the most honorable and generous sigil government, inquire forthwith at Office of Vermin and Disease Control to help stem the plague of brain rats. Bounties paid. Copper given for each rat tail brought. Tails must be genuine and from rat only. No cat, dog, or fiend tail is accepted. Offer office several streets south and west of Mortuary Gate in Lower Hive. Ask for official inspector in charge, the respected Phineas T. Lort, the uh, 39th. All right, got some spelling problems there. Other notices. Um, bill of fare. Someone has posted a bill of fare for the Gathering Dust Bar, but the bill of fare cannot be read, as the words Smoldering Corpse Bar have been scrawled in charcoal over the bill. Smoldering Corpse Bar. The zombie immediately jerks its left arm upwards and points far to the southeast. A moment later, the arm falls back to its side with a thump. Reminds me of a job I once had. He seems embarrassed. Well, I mean, without the arms. Hmm, I wonder if this would work with other notices. Um, examine official notice. Public notice by the order of the Judiciary Council and in accordance with the citizenry of Sigil, let it be known that those defacing a registered servant of the dustman, either by graffiti, malicious attack, or by posting notices, will constitute felonious assault, and the perpetrator will be answerable for the vandalism of said servant, by order of the Hall of Speakers. Examine the other notices. Uh, wanted. Wanted. Able-bodied person willing to investigate a matter of the utmost importance to the dustman cause will offer suitable compensation upon successful completion of said task. Interested parties inquire with initiate Noroch in the gathering dust bar. We already know where that is. Other notices. Ignore notices. Examine graffiti. The graffiti runs from obscenities about the dustmen to slogans glorifying what appear to be local gangs. One piece of graffiti catches your eye. Someone has carved the name Farid on the corpse's left arm and then slashed an X across it. Farid? Updated my journal. The zombie immediately jerks its left arm upwards and points far to the west and downwards. A moment later, the arm falls back to its side with a thump. So you can just say something and this corpse will point to you where it is. So that's helpful. Uh, thanks. So that was fun. What's All this right. on the ground here? Cobblestone. 
Uh, do I actually want to pick that up, I wonder? Um, is there anything I can drop? Probably. Drop this scalpel. Pick up this, put up this crescent hatchet. Oh, I'm overburdened. Drop this club. All right. What? What is here? Oh wait, let's go talk to. Her. So Anna. You see a striking red-haired girl dressed in red, uh, dressed in leather armor. Her right arm is covered with a series of interlocking plates that look as if they were taken from the skin of some creature, and a horn shoulder piece protects her left arm. Oddly enough, she has a tail that, that is flicking back and forth as you watch. Pike off! Greetings. The girl ignores you. Um, who are you? The girl sneers, then makes an obscene gesture with her tail. Pike off, you clueless sod. <clears throat> hey, hey, easy. I just had some questions. Aye, and what is it ye want? Uh, let's see here. I'm looking for someone named Farid. Do you know where I can find him? My accent for Anna's gonna be terrible. Aye, I might. I might say more if you sweeten the question, aye? She clicks her tongue and rubs two fingers together. Jink, jink, I. Jink, jink. She means money. Oh. Aye. She glances more at Morte than shrugs. What the skull said. Hard coin. Hmm. All right. How much? How much is it to you to know, I? She studies you, then folds her arm. Come on, I haven't got all day, I haven't. Hmm. How about ten? That enough? That lump of copper isn't enough uh, to whet a fated's appetite. You'll be needing more if you want to make friends here, tard. <laughs> she just called me a tard. All right, how about twenty then? Aye, all right. She pockets the money. It's gone so quickly you have no idea where it vanished to. Look for him in the alley spireward from the mortuary. That's to the south and west of the mortuary, aye? Very well. I have other questions. Aye. And what is it you want? Um. Can you tell me where I am? You're lost, but you're about to find trouble. Make yourself lost elsewhere, bubber. Mm, I had some other questions I wanted to ask first. Um. I'm missing a journal. Have you seen one? She looks at you strangely. Nay. I've seen nothing like that, I haven't. Um, alright. <laughs> Let's ask the stupid question. Y you know, you've, you've got a tail. Do I now? The girl looks at her tail. So I do! And here I was thinking it was a trick of me eye. My, aren't ye a sharp cutter? She bares her teeth. Why don't you piss off to wherever hole you crawled out of and leave me be? Me nor my tail is for trade, Jig. Alright, I was just cured. It's just as well neither you nor your tail are for sale. You couldn't squeak out a living with them anyway. Uh. What are ye about, ye blighter? Say it again. Um, let's see here. <laughs> so we can say all sorts of interesting things here. Uh, we can disagree that she couldn't make a living selling herself. Um. Alright, let's go ahead. He said and I disagree, that you couldn't make a living selling yourself. What's all this now? You be playing stern, hardhead, friendly hardhead with me, she sneers. Pike off, you lecherous filth. Farewell. Ugh, I've never seen something so ugly of not. I'm gone. All right, what is, what is here? Gathering dust bar. All right. We do need to go in here. Chief. What are we doing in here? Let's say we just give this place the laugh, all right? No. Here is Awaiting Death, Dustman, Nerochi. That's the guy who's in the notice. Zombie worker, Sarah the Skeptic. 
lots of people with names in here, which is of course, which of course means that we ought to talk to them. All right. Because you know, it's just a good idea. Emoric. So let's talk with Norochi or Noroch first. Norochi. You see a spindle-thin dustman in dirty black robes. His stiff black hair springs forth from his skull like a crown of spikes, and his leper-white skin is drawn sharply across his skull. He is frowning into his drink and mumbling to himself. Greetings. The dustman looks up, blinks once, then looks you up and down, studying you. As he studies you, he takes one of his spiked locks and points at himself with it. Naroch, initiate, dustman. Guard. I'm here about the posting outside. The dustman looks you up and down. Many troubles have I. Help can you. A mausoleum awakes. The dead walk. The dead disturbed. The dustman disturbed. Find out what disturbs the undead, and copper coins will I pay. Very well. Where is this mausoleum? Updated my journal. Noroch nods. Mausoleum by Dustman Memorial. Go north and west from Black Monument. Go to Arch and a semicircle over your heart with this finger make. He wiggles his index finger on his right hand. To the mausoleum, go you will. I'll look into it. Farewell. All right. Let's talk to Sayer the Skeptic. As you approach, the elderly woman turns and stares at you. La, look who's come a-calling on Ser today, death's dearest son. She looks you up and down, then shakes her head in disbelief. By every power and its mother, boy, what crypt did you crawl out of? I didn't crawl out of any crypt. She frowns, her face wrinkling like crumpled parchment. Right then, what coffin did you crawl out of? She mumbles. One of those shoddy splint coffins at Hamir's, or Hamry's, most like. Gives corpses splinters, I hear. She sniffs. That boy's been not been worth a clipped copper since his father died. Uh, who is Hamris? Hamris is a coffin breaker. <coughs> Pardon, coffin maker in the lower ward. Inherited the shop when his father died, much to the shame of every corpse needing a coffin, crypt, or tombstone and sigil. What happened to his father? Those ears just for show, boy. He died, she mumbles. His son talked him to death, most likely. The boy's tongue doesn't stop rattling. I'm surprised he doesn't shake his head loose from his shoulders. I'm looking for some information. Can I ask you some questions? Questions, eh? Well, you can ask. Sarah looks at you with a steely eye, then smiles. Crypt crawler. Let's see... I am searching for a man named Farid. Have you seen him? Sayre's face crumples into a frown. That dog! He's the worst of the collector lot. I heard he has his kip set up somewhere in Ragpicker Square, many streets west of the mortuary gate. Dangerous place, though. Some of those collectors aren't patient enough to wait for folks to die so they can sell them for jink. Collectors, yeah, we know what collectors are. Are you a dustman? A dustman, I suppose. Sarah sniffs. Tch. I've seen enough sand pass through the hourglass while wearing these robes. This body's almost ready to pay the ferryman. She chuckles, but there's not much mirth in it. Are you afraid of dying? Of course I am, boy. Who isn't? She frowns and glances around. Well, except the dustman. They're not afraid because they've been swallowing so much of their own bat droppings over the decades they've blinded themselves into thinking that death is some kind of release. Tch. So, what sparked this crisis of faith? She shrugs. Life, I suppose. It, uh... She frowns. Ha! Never you mind. I won't bore you with the niggling details. I'd like to know, actually. Oh, would you? She looks at you skeptically. Tch, how old do you take me for, boy? Um... Let's see... I'm going to tell the truth. Old. She snorts. Well, you're wrong. I'm really old. Now, I've spent most of my long years teaching Dustman. 
I've seen many dustmen whelps grow within our order, taught them the ways of the faction, kept the faith, preached the tenets of the faction, she frowns, and so on and so on. No questions, no doubt. This life was merely an antechamber that led to the true death. What happened? Well, uh, half a month back, I went sick with fever, she sighs. I thought it was the end. It, uh, rattled my cage. How? Her face becomes a stone. There's something about having your faction members circle around your deathbed like a pack of pale-faced ghouls, nodding and agreeing that your suffering and dying is all for the best. Oh, Sarah is so fortunate. She shall soon be relieved of the burden of life. Burden of life. That's when it struck me. That... That there's something, a queer expression comes over her features, addled about not appreciating your life. The dustman keeps saying that life is misery and suffering. Is it? That we should be happy to pass on into oblivion. Should we? She shakes her head. Questions, questions, and precious few answers. Um, it doesn't sound like you believe in the dustman philosophy anymore. I suppose I've got a swarm of doubts all buzzing in my skull. She rubs her temples. Hard to get them to be quiet sometimes. They need to be fed some answers, and I haven't got them all worked out yet. What will you do? To be square, boy, I don't know. Sarah sighs. That's the problem with doubt. I can't even trust that what I'm feeling is true, or if I'm scared of death only because of my brush with the fever, or even what I should do. Is this a passing thing? I don't know. So we have a couple of options here. Uh, we can help her out a bit. Let's see, if you truly believed, then your brush with the fever would have not left you such doubts. Treat this as a test of your belief. It sounds like these feelings are only temporary. At the core of the dustman philosophy is that life is one of pain. It is a weapon that life uses against the soul to keep it anchored to this existence. Do not let this brush with fever break your dustman beliefs. Time will heal these doubts. Um, Yeah, it's probably, probably the first one is true. Um, it's either one or three that I'm going for. Two is just wrong. Um, I'm going to go with number one here. Sir, if you had truly believed in the Dustman philosophy, then your brush with fever would not have left you with such doubts. Sir stares at you, then nods slowly. Maybe so, maybe so. She frowns, her face wrinkling up in concentration. Uh, I'll have to chew it over some more. So we got some XP for talking to her. You should. It's no small matter. La, now, enough of me rattling on about my woes. Sare stares at your scars. You look like you've shared a few handshakes with death yourself. Hasn't that changed your view somewhat? Doesn't it make you appreciate life a bit more? Um... Hmm... It's generally a bad idea to tell people about your condition. Let's go with... You know what, I'm just gonna go with one here. Well, my condition is unique. I woke up in the mortuary. I think they mistook me for a corpse and were prepared to bury me. The strange thing is, I think I actually had died and got better. Sarah blinks. You're rattling my coffin. It's true. Strange are the ways of the plains, and I've seen str too much to throw any tail out of the out with the wash. She studies your face. If it's true, why does this happen? Um. All I know is that I woke up in the mortuary with no memory and covered with enough wounds to kill me three times over. Now, don't be saying that too loud. She glances around. Most peculiar. Never heard of anything like that. Shame about the memories. Do you have any idea why this happens? Nay, not a one. 
Never knew anyone who death wouldn't take. Until now. Well, perhaps I could ask you some other questions. Let's see... Um... I wanted to ask you about some of the dustmen in particular. No harm in it. Who's on your mind? Uh, actually, I met a scribe named Dahl at the mortuary. Do you know him? Tch, Dahl. He was my instructor in the philosophical arts during my early training at the mortuary, and a crusty fool to boot. He's ill, so my ears tell me. I'll bet he'll even bore death with his presence. Is he dying? Tch, sicker than a spotted dog he is. Not much sand left in the hourglass for him. Or... Uh, met a guide named Sogo. Sogo, do you know him? That boy used to be a regular around here. Don't know what happened to him. Could be he was shaken up after his friend died. Explain. One of his friends was killed in the hive a few weeks ago, torn apart by rats. She shakes her head. Messy business. Has Sogo always been a guide at the mortuary? No, only for the past few months, and last I heard, he was just sent off for some missionary duty, but I don't know where. Uh, Evain... Who? A strange young woman, poor eyesight, near death, talons for hands? Shares, Sarah shakes her head. Maybe she's a new initiate, I never heard of her. Alright, goodbye, Sarah. Okay, there's... Gravesend here. Hey. This tiny, wizened man is dwarfed by his huge dustman robes. They look as if they were chosen to cloak his small stature. Although he looks to be in his late 90s, this man is extremely energetic. He fidgets continuously and his eyes dart around like, uh, around the bar like a bird's. Greetings. The man's eyes gleam as he takes your measure and he gives a slight nod in greeting. Hail and well met, traveler. You look like one who is just getting their sigil legs about them. He trails off. Pardon me, have we met before? Your face seems familiar somehow. Hmm, possibly. Are you certain it was me? Hmm, maybe I was mistaken. Mortai shakes his head. Well, no matter. No matter. How is it that Mortai Gravesend may help you? Do you seek the contract, perhaps? contract. The contract? Why, it's but a simple transaction. From the depths of his huge robe, Mortai pulls forth a dusty parchment and a quill pen. I give you fifty comments. In return, after death, the dustman faction may claim your remains. He smiles, then clucks his tongue. What use will you have for them at that point anyway? What do the dustmen do with the body? Mortai holds up his hands as if he doesn't know. What does it matter? It's of no consequence when you pass on. It matters to me. Well, if you must know, oft times nothing is done with the body, and it is we, the dustmen, who have wasted all that money. More fools us. Mordai gives a light smile, then looks apologetic. But rarely, there are times when the workers in the mortuary need to be replaced, and then we may have need for your body. You mean I'll be animated as a corpse and put to work in the mortuary? That doesn't sound good. Uh, but no harm is done, no pain. Mortai raises a finger as if to emphasize the point. And there is no danger. In exchange for money you can spend in this life, you merely have to give us something that you will have no need of anyway once you have died. Mortai taps his chest. I signed the contract myself, if you must know. I shall have no need of my body when I pass on. Let's see. So we can just get some cash. There's, I feel like there's something else that we can do with this later on, but I don't exactly remember what it is. Um, so, I'm just gonna let that be and consider it for now. Of course, of course, more I not. It would be my pleasure to answer any questions. Um, no, I don't wanna anything interesting. Mortai nods as you turn to leave. Hmm. He has a strange expression on his face. Is there something wrong? Mortai frowns. Forgive me, I must ask. Are you sure we haven't met before? Uh, possibly. I, I do not recall you. Mortai shakes his head. Well, no matter. 
Yes, farewell, farewell. Mortai studies you as you leave, and you hear him mutter under his breath, something about that one. I feel like we've probably uh, signed the contract before. All right. Uh, let's talk to some zombie workers. This female corpse is dressed in a heavy burlap shirt covered with food and wine stains. Her lips have been stitched closed, and her arms and legs are wrapped in several layers of bandages. The bandages seem to have been soaked in preservatives to keep the corpse fresh. As a result, the corpse's rotting odor has been replaced with an equally repulsive vinegar smell. So, doing anything later? The zombie continues to stare at you. All right, then. Great talking to you. Farewell. As you turn away, you notice Mor Morte staring at you. Eh? Eh? What is it? Did you see the way that cadaverous beauty was staring at me? Morty's teeth chatter, as if in anticipation. She was looking for some lucky cutter to thaw her coffin. Ugh, please don't start this again. Morde ignores you and becomes thoughtful. I don't really mind the attention, actually. It's just that I like to see, like to be seen as something more than just a skull, you know? I have feelings that go beyond the, my base animal instincts. I want courtship. Not some outright, some Fortnite fling around the mausoleum. Keep it up and I'm going to fling you somewhere. Whoa, Chief. Morde back slightly out of arm's reach. Women, they appreciate lovers, not fighters. <clears throat> you are perhaps the last person I would ever take romantic advice from. If you had half the sense you died with, you'd know better. Morte's voice rises to a new height of, new heights of smugness. When it comes to the annals of love, I wrote them all. Whatever, Morde. Let's go. Okay. We can go and look at these barrels, see if they have anything interesting in them. Done. Emmerich. You see a heavy-set man with dark skin and grim features. He is dressed in dustman robes and is regarding you with a stony gaze. Greetings. You have the look of one lost. The man's voice is like stone settling. Did the wind send you here, or are you here with a purpose? Who are you? I am Emmerich, factotum and initiate of the fourth circle. Is this your bar? If you measure ownership in copper, this is not my establishment. If you measure ownership in spirit, it's mine. He pauses, as if trying to emphasize a point. The dustmen here are my students. They are under my protection. Can I ask you some questions? Emmerich waits. Um, can you tell me about the dustmen faction? Dustmen seek the true death. Some call it oblivion, but... This is incorrect. To Dustman, the true death is freedom from the chains of this false life. False life. This life that many cling to with their emotions is a false existence. As long as one clings to it, they will continually be reborn into it. One must divest themselves of emotion to escape this cycle. I see. Can you tell me about how your faction is organized? Dustmen are organized into five circles. The fifth circle is made of the lowest rank of dustmen, initiates. The first circle is comprised of the highest ranking dustmen, the ruling body of our faction. Um, I don't want to talk about anything else with him right now. There is one more named person around here. Oh, there's two more. We talked to old Copper Eyes. Before you is a tall, silent figure. He could easily pass for a statue, although the deep furrows in his face and brow make you wonder if the sculptor was a little too eager in defining the face with a chisel. He looks well over 50 years old, but exactly how much over 50 is hard to tell. As he slowly turns to look at you, you catch the dull sheen of copper in his eyes. Greetings. Old copper eyes stares at you. His eyes are difficult to make out past the black well of his eye sockets, but they look to have a coppery sheen about them. Alright, um, I have some questions. Copper Eyes says nothing. Uh, never mind. Farewell. Uh, where? There we 
There was one more person, wasn't there? Someone named Awaiting Death. There he is. I'll talk to him and then we're going to end this episode. Before you is a young dustman with stubble on his chin and dark circles beneath his eyes. He is staring at the wall with a somber expression. Greetings. The dustman doesn't look up. He stares straight ahead as if he is seeing something several leagues beyond the walls of his bar. Can I ask you some questions? The dustman doesn't respond. He keeps staring into the distance. Farewell, then. As you turn to leave, the dustman suddenly speaks, his voice barely a murmur. You have to strain to hear the words. You think he said something about wanting to die. What did you say? The boy's expression does not flicker. Do you want to die? Let's see. Um. So. Um, let's, we're going to say, uh, no. Truth. No. Do you? Yes. He studies you. Why do you want to live? Mm, let's see here. Truth. There are certain questions I need to answer about my life before I am willing to surrender it. I want to find out who I am. The dustman listens silently. After you speak, he does not respond. Merely watches you. He looks like he is thinking. Do you want to die? Is that why you asked? Yes. Uh, why don't you want to live? This is living. He bares his teeth and his hands clenched. This existence, this existence is a mockery of life. I do not wish to continue the charade any longer. Death is silent, comforting. Um, let's say, trust me, it's not. The boy seems irritated by the comment. And how do you know? Hmm. Uh, I don't know. I've yet to see what lies beyond death and remember it. If I die again, perhaps then I could speak of it. The dustman blinks, then sneers. You lie. No man can die more than once, not without being resurrected by mighty magics. <clears throat> uh, try and kill me then. See what happens. Or no, let's go, would you like to see? What d do you mean? He looks like he wants to turn away, but he cannot. You can't seriously take your hands and twist your neck. Your vision slowly returns. Your death felt different this time. You see a waiting death standing above you. He looks horrified and fascinated. He has propped you into a chair and is looking apprehensively at the other bar patrons. They don't appear to have noticed or have mistaken you for a drunk. Convinced now? Are you one of the walking dead? Uh, uh, I don't know. Then what are you? I don't know, but I die and I am reborn. Yet you, you still think, you still feel? Mm, yes, but there is a hollowness. Something is missing and it eats at you never leaves you at peace. To be dead and still think and feel, will misery never leave a body be? The thought seems to horrify him. Even death is no release. Indeed. Perhaps you should not be so quick to abandon this life before knowing what the next life holds for you. The boy falls silent, thinking. Eventually he turns back up to you. Your words carry weight, sir. A fresh perspective. I will do as I, I, uh, I will do as you have said. That is all I ask. Live, grow old, and learn. Farewell. 500 XP. All right. So we uh, we killed ourselves right in front of him in order to demonstrate that we weren't lying, and in order to get him to stop being such a morose goff child. Um, so now he will go on and live to be an old dustman and die of natural causes. I think that you can get him to just go kill himself, uh, but, you know, that wouldn't be very nice. 
So, uh, there's lots of dustmen to talk about here, being all very grim, trying to get us to sign our body over, and that kind of thing. Uh, we will end this episode here and do more chattering with the Dusties later. Hopefully you've enjoyed this episode. If you have, please hit the thumbs up button. If you would like to see the continued uh, talk fest that is Planescape Torment, then please consider uh, subscribing to my channel. If you're not going to do either of those things, then, well, I don't care what you do. <laughs>